I have these vintage slides of the Apollo space missions. This was actually for like a social media promo for Photoshop's expansion feature. But this effect ended up looking so cool, I thought I should make a whole tutorial on it. Because if anyone has these 35 millimeter slides laying around, maybe they're your grandparents, maybe you found them at an auction, you can do this and it would look really cool and impress a lot of people on your Instagram. And this video is sponsored by Squarespace. So once we get to the point where we're gonna start motion tracking our bigger slide, we can go over to our right to our tracker panel right here and hit track motion. If we do position and rotation, it'll give us these two beautiful track points in our layers panel. I'm gonna put them on these bold blue serifs, just like this. These are so nice and so crisp that, um, watch this, when I hit play backwards, it's gonna perfectly track everything. And we're not gonna worry about going to the part where it's out of focus. Okay, look at this incredible track, gorgeous. Now what we're gonna do is hit layer, new and null object, and let's rename this to slide track. Incredible, and tracker panel, hit edit target, okay, and apply, bam. So now you can see our null is perfectly tracked to our slide. So let's get to the frame where we want it to get big, maybe right here. And we'll go up to composition, save frame, and file. And we'll just name this um, astronaut expansion. In the render queue, let's just um, save it as a JPEG. Bam. In your Creative Cloud app, you wanna go to the Photoshop beta version. Because look, it's got this generative expand feature. So if we take our screenshot and we open it up in the beta version, let's select a crop of just the picture inside the slide. Let's hit check. Bam, we've got this beautiful image where it gives us the option, if we quick click on the crop tool, we can expand this out to the right and up. We can hit generate and it'll load up a few options of various backgrounds. And you can scroll through some of the options. Oh, this is sick. Holy cow, I love that. So these are what we're working with. Maybe I'll generate one more. Whoa, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, so it gives you lots of options to play with. For the sake of time, I'm gonna select this one. This is very cool. Here, I'll make it taller and hit Chucky. And now we've got this gorgeous vertical image of um, what was originally this 35 millimeter slide. That's so fun. All right, so I'm just going to select everything and convert it into a smart object. I'm gonna name this astronaut expanded quick export as a PNG and I'll drag this into my After Effects. And if we lower the opacity a little bit, we just need to line it up with the original image. All right, if I crank the opacity to 100, let's see how I did. It's literally perfect. All right, and so now, turn the opacity down to 50, and we're going to click on the Pick Whip tool, whip, and put it onto our slide track. So now, if we watch it back, you can see that our astronaut is tracked pretty, pretty well on there. I'm going to realign it so it's perfect. And once your picture is linked to the null, it looks really satisfying. If we crank the opacity up, it just looks like our image is moving. Almost gives it a natural handheld motion. But on. So the next step is creating a mask around the actual slide photo. And we're just gonna feather the edges for it to blend into the photo that's now bigger. So I'll hit subtract. If I crank this up, you'll see the hard border right here. So what we're gonna do is crank up the feather and we can bring the expansion down. And now that we have this track to our slide, we can create a mask around the uh, image. Hit M and select intersect. So we can create where our border will start and end. So at this point, this is what we have. <laughs> it looks awesome. We're just gonna do an easy mask of the thumb on top of everything. The easiest way in the whole world to mask your thumb in this situation is let's create a new solid, just a random black solid. Let's scale it up a little bit and make it invisible. We're gonna create a mask around our thumb. When you're done with your mask, you can unsolo your black solid and see what you've done. Uh, uh, uh. Let's solo this layer of the original footage and under track mat, let's just select this dark solid. So now we've got a thumb. And so our thumb is now on, is now on top of the card, but if we play it back, you can see that we lose our mask instantly. So let's solo the bottom layer and let's track the thumb. If I track this big bright spot on my fingernail, hit forward analyze. What we're gonna do is link the black solid to this track so that perfect mask of your thumb just follows your uh, hand the whole time. Diet Coke break. All right, once we have this tracking data, make a new null. I'm gonna call it finger track. 
edit target and apply. All right, let's go to our let's go to our thumb frame right here. Now that we're at our thumb frame, we can grab the pick whip of our solid, put it on our finger track, and now if we hit play, you'll see that the track, the mask is now tracked onto your finger. It's literally perfect too. So now it looks like you're holding the expanded 35 millimeter slide, and it's kind of a cool reveal. You can drag the actual expanded picture later in the comp. So it looks like you're holding the slide, and then bam, looks like you're holding the slide, bam! Super cool. Um, I'm gonna pre-compose everything for our thumb layer. Thumb. And in the effects of presets panel, I'm gonna drop a drop shadow on it. So I'm gonna put a drop shadow on my thumb. And with the pin tool, I'm just going to select the area over um, the slide. And if you hit E and drop down drop shadow, under compositing options, you can just select mask one. So the effect is only applied to where the mask is. We will put it right here. So I will lower the opacity of the mask. I'll just track this mask where I need it. So now we are holding the slide and our thumb has a beautiful shadow. And now you can see in the actual final edit, I have the borders of the Apollo slide on there as well. If I take the Apollo 15 slide and I just kind of with the marquee tool, copy and paste all the details. So, you know, I take all the the text, you know, I'm just copying, oops. I'm just copying and pasting all the little details. So if you like get rid of the bottom layer, I have all of this stuff. And then I just content aware fill everything out. I use the magic eraser tool to get rid of the white background. I mask out my hand. I repair the borders of the slide like so. And once you have a solid clean slide, you can use the transform tool to like make it a really big version of itself. And then you take the details that you already copied and pasted it, pasted and you put them back on top of your slide. And then bam, you've got a custom vertical version of a 35 millimeter slide. Maybe this is like a 110 millimeter slide. Wait, no, that's a smaller version. Ignore me. And then you can drag your newly found border into your comp, bring it underneath of your thumb. And with the rounded rectangular tool, you can create a mask, hit subtract, and you can put it over where your slide is. You just kind of have to get your angle right and stuff because what we're about to do is connect this to the same null object that the slide photo is underneath. This is all just up to your preference how you want like this slide to look. That looks nice. So on this border layer, we're going to take the pick whip and put it on the same slide track. So now if we watch it back, we are holding basically a postcard of original slide photos of the Apollo 15 moon landing. That's a cool effect. I'm sorry, I was really proud of this one. And then of course, if you want the details of your slide, you just bring in these um, extra copies and put them where you want and just link them to uh, the border. Since the border is connected to the null, it'll follow the direction. All right, this is like the little name tag on the bottom. We'll put that here, link it to our null, and then bam. This looks incredible. Um, and of course, in the original, if we take a look, there's like a black border Order on the inside of this mat. So I actually just created a new solid, made it black, and I put it, put it underneath the border. And I just created a rounded rectangle mask like this, and I inverted the mask. And since we're gonna connect it to the same track, we can go ahead and just make a rough mask behind the border right here. Bam. And on the masking options, hit intersect. Um, true, yes. And then we're going to link this to the border. And so now, bam, this is incredible. I love it so much. And since this is a mask, you can um, just customize the symmetry however you want by just dragging each one of these corner edges. And I kind of made in my edit to make this black border look a little more like aged. If you type in roughen edges on the effects and presets panel and you zoom in, you can see now the border. This is before and after is a little more rough and that's nice. And that is how you turn 35 millimeter film slot into bigger versions of themselves in the After Effects. I'm obsessed with this effect. It's so cool. I kind of want to do this with every single slide I have, and I have like 10,000. Oh my God, so exciting. I'm so glad I did this tutorial. Uh, and I'm even more excited to introduce today's sponsor, not Diet Coke, 
Squarespace! From online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Let's say you want to be a successful business person. As an independent artist, I know the feeling. To start, they let you do custom merch. So if you're an influencer or you want to create a business around you as a personality or even a brand, you can rely on Squarespace for shipping and inventory and even design. Do the whole process through Squarespace. To dovetail off that, they have online retail stores. So not only can you make your own merch through Squarespace, if you make your own custom products yourself, or even digital products like LUTs. Visual effects templates or visual effects assets, you can put them in a really beautifully crafted online store within Squarespace. So it's a one-stop shop for everything e-commerce. And one of my favorite parts is if you want to make extra money making exclusive bonus content for your audience, they have member areas. So you can put exclusive bonus content that no one else will ever see anywhere except your Squarespace website. So you can start monetizing off of monthly subscriptions to basically your private library of bonus videos. Squarespace is amazing and I even got you a discount code. So if you go to squarespace.com slash Will Carmack, you'll get 10% off your first website or domain. Happy business running everybody. Thank me later. Hope everyone learned something cool today. I hope you check out and support my sponsor. And where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day. <gasps>